You can take some notes as we go here. Um, okay, so, uh, so the percent, so the percent of students, the percent of students shorter than you, that's your percentile. So like for the middle one, what's that, 69 inches? A lot of people were five foot nine. So even though there's a lot of you people who are five foot nine, okay. Oh, I should wear my microphone. I'm going to use all the technology today. Okay. So, um, so even though there's a lot of you who are five foot nine, your percentile is still the percent below you. Okay. So if you count up all the sticky dots that are below you, how many dots are there all together? Um, so, hello. Um, so, that was cool. um, so if you uh, if you count up all the dots below, you one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. If you're sixty-nine inches, okay, fourteen. I'm gonna count up the total: fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight. 29, only 29 folks in here. Okay, so if you were uh, if you were 69 inches, okay, you are in the 14 divided by 29 percentile. What's that? That's really close to 50th percentile, right? 14 over 29, just slightly under uh, 47 percent or something like that. And so that's how you calculate. Your percentile. Questions about that? Easy enough. Easy enough. Okay. Um, let's see if we could get this to work. Yes. I have a question. Yes. Um, so when you're counting that, do you count yourself? You, the total like number? Yeah. Like if you're 69 inches, do you count all of the ones that are 69 along with the ones that are underneath it, and then put it out with the total? Do you only count what's below? Because you only count what's below. Because if you're the bottom one, does that mean you're zero? Because you can't count yourself? I don't know. Like if, you're saying, if you say you don't count the percentile that you're in, then wouldn't it be zero because there's nothing below you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so do you, should you count your No, you don't count yourself. Yeah, so yeah, I guess if you're the bottom one, it would be in the zero percentile. Oh, that would be depressing. Yeah. I don't know. I have, to, I have to think about that. Let me get back to you on that one, okay? I'm not, I'm, but usually, usually you have enough data. I think you might be called the first percentile, actually. But, but let me look that up and let you know. But you do, count, but uh, the peak percentile, so here we go. Um, the P percentile of addition here is a value with P percent of the observations less than it. So according to that definition, you would be in the, I'm sorry, Natalie, according to that definition, you would be in the zero percentile. Okay. Are you depressed now? No. Okay, good. Because we, <laughs> <go, laughs> we, we could go to my freshman class. We'll find some shorter people. Um, uh, Okay, I'm just putting little dots here so that it records my So we had 29 students, and uh, we had 29 students, and we were trying to figure out what percentile people were in, people were if they were five foot nine, right? That's how many, uh, and there were 14 people less than people who were for 14, this is uh, uh, students less than students, Less than whoops, students. Uh -oh, students less than uh, five foot nine is sixty nine inches, right? So uh, don't do this weirdness. Why is it doing that? Stop. Less than sixty nine. Okay, got it. And so what percentile is that? Kyle said that's about 
Forty-eight percent that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'll believe you. Forty cent. You could write it like this percentile something. So that's what percentile means. All right? Good? Done? What's wrong? What's so funny? I don't know that that's it. All right. So uh, here are 25 so Mr. Pryor's statistics class and first test. The bold score is Jenny 86. How did she perform relative to her, oh, relative to her classmates? So again, uh, you could actually, we, uh, a nice way to do this is to look at a uh, stem and leaf plot. Okay, so Jenny got an 86. 86, here's Jenny, right? How many students are below her? Well, you don't have to count. I mean, you could count up to whatever number she is, but how many students are above her? There's three students that scored higher than her, and since there's 25 students in all, that must be three, 22. That must mean that there's 21 below her, right? So that so to figure out her percentile, we would just uh, go 21, 21 divided by 25. I bet that is. Anyone do that in their head? Just multiply by four. Six. Just multiply by 84, right? That would be the 80, 84th percentile, right? Because right? Because four times 25 makes 140. Because it's kind of asked. Questions about that? Easy enough? Okay. What percentile would be the percentile of a student who scored a 77 B? What percentile would this person be? All right. And well, it doesn't matter which one, because these guys are not really below. They're the same. So we'd have to go one, two, three, four, five, six below 77. So it's six out of 25, which is the 24th percent time. First one was Questions about that? Yes. Uh, Vanessa. Yes. Um, so, so in any, so there's always going to be a zero percentile, but never a hundredth percentile. That is correct, according to their this definition. Yeah. Okay. Um, yes. Okay. Let's move on. This is a, so now we're going to talk about something called the cumulative <coughs> relative frequency graph. Okay. There's some interesting graphs, but one of the most common graphs is a frequency table for a quantitative variable. For instance, here that summarizes the age of the first 44 U.S. presidents when they were inaugur inaugurated. Okay, so um, so this means that there were two presidents who were inaugurated between the ages of 40 and 44. Right, seven presidents. Inaugurated, that's when they become president, right? That's what that means? Yeah. Okay. Uh, 13, between 50 and 54, 12, so on and so forth. 3, 65 to 69. Okay. So then, what we have here, this is called the cumulative relative frequency graph. So the way this is calculated, okay, we start with the very lowest number here, which is, uh, so, even if there isn't a president who was inaugurated when he was 40, if we make our categories 40 to 44, I put a dot here at 40 to 44. And then I go to the first frequency. There were two people who were nominated between the ages of 40 and 44. Okay? And um, so two out of 44, two out of 44, <laughs> makes 0.045 or 4.5%. So I come over here to the next uh, category and I put a dot at 4.5%. And you have to kind of approximate, right? So this would be like 10%, so 5% would be somewhere around here. So that's about 4.5%, okay? But then you do not, so then the next category, seven people were nominated between the ages of uh, 45 and 49 okay but you don't go to you don't go to 15.9 percent you add 15.9 percent to what you already have okay 
So total, so this is called the cumulative frequency. So here I start at two, I take seven and add it, because there's seven residents here, and I get nine. Two divide, or nine out of 44 makes 20.5. Do you get that? Um, stop me if you have questions. So over here, I, at this end point, which is the next category, I put the 20.5. So I keep adding, okay? I'm adding, because you're trying to get cumulative means it adds up to 100%. Yes, Natalie. So in this case, um, the residents are getting 20 and you would count yourself. If you were doing the heights, um, yeah. because like the bottom one. Yeah, yeah. If you were doing the heights, you would count. You would count yourself. Yeah. So it's not like you're, it's not. Um, you're not doing the uh, percentile here, right? It's cumulative relative frequency. Okay. So relative frequency is the percent. So then, the, so in the 50-54, looks like a lot of presidents were nominated between 50 up to uh, and including 54, right? There's 13 of them. So you take seven, or excuse me, you take nine plus 13. Because so far you have nine presidents being nominated plus another 13 makes 22. And 22 out of 44 gives you 50%. So it looks like um, this would be this would be um, at the end of this category, which would be 55. You want to go up to 50%. So that, that's about about 50%. Yes. So if you were nominated when you were 55, you would be. If you were nominated when you were 55, you would be in the what percentile? approximately the 50th percentile because 50 percent of the presidents were nominated younger than you you get that okay and then it just keeps building right and then 12 presidents between 50 and 50 55 and 59 so you take this number you add it to that number that makes 34 and you go 34 divided by 44 which gives you 77 percent and that's where that dot so so far you're here okay you get it? And all together, it's going to add up eventually to 100%. Yes? Yeah? No? So if I, and then I made up some good questions on this. Where's my good questions? When do most presidents get inaugurated? How can you tell by looking at the graph when most presidents get inaugurated? The biggest uh, difference in percent. The, the biggest difference, so where are the biggest difference in percent? 50 to 55. Right, probably from here to here, and pretty close. Yeah. Pretty close. Uh oh. Moby, come on, you're killing me here. Okay? And also here, right? You can tell also by the what of the line. Slope. The one that has the steepest slope, right? Is also, for those of you doing calculus, right? It's uh, the line with the steepest slope, is also where most of the presidents got inaugurated. So the steepest line, steepest line, stop. Come on. <laughs> steepest slope. Steepest. <laughs> steepest slope. Or, uh, and so the answers, you could say that it's about from 50 to 60, right? From 50 to 60 would be like where most presidents get inaugurated. You get that? Okay. And then I have another question for you. Okay about what percentile was Obama when he was inaugurated. So this is a good question, interpreting the graph. How can I do that? He was inaugurated first at 47. So you go to his age, okay? You go to his age, and you go up from about 47. So this, I guess that'd be 47.5. So if you go like this, right? And then you go across, Okay, about what percentile was Obama when he was inaugurated? 10th percentile, right? Which means that he was, I don't know if that's good or bad, but he was one of the youngest, youngest presidents that got inaugurated, 
right? Um, then we have our current person. Um, Trump at age 70, what percentile would he be in? He would be way up here, right? So if I go across, he's like the 99th percentile. I'll stop doing all this. Um, so Trump would be would be in the 99th percentile. Okay? I'm not making any political political. All right, 99th percentile. 99th percentile. 10th percentile. 10th percentile. And then uh, estimate Q1 and Q3. And I, so this is a good question, and you'll have one like this on a quiz and a test, and I've seen ones very similar to this on like AP tests and stuff. How could I estimate Q1? What percent of the data is below the first quartile? 25%. So to estimate, oh, come on. So to estimate the quartiles, okay, I just want to use this thing because I want to record the lesson and it's giving me headaches. Let's do this. Let's make it dotted. How do I make it dotted? Like this, okay? So, uh, so if I want to estimate uh, the 25th percentile, this is 30, I could kind of go down here, okay? And go across and down, see that? So this number right here would be Q1. You get that? Yes. For the Q3, for Q3, what percentile is above Q3? 25%. 25%. So what amount is below Q3? 75%. So I want to go up to 75 up here. So that's like 70, right? So 75 would be somewhere over here. And so I'm going to go across, okay, horizontally if you can, and straight down. And it looks like Q3 is right around 60 right q3 and how do i find the iqr from that subtract right so i go 60 minus this looks like about 50 51 so 51 so the iqr is uh not okay the, the from 60 to 51 so that's where 50 percent 50% of the, uh, that's interquartile range is not, but 50% of the nominees or the, well, not nominees, what are they? The inaug inaugurees, okay, were between 60 and 51 years old. Get it? Okay. Questions about that? Okay. Let's move on to uh, a Z score, okay? So, so another way, one, one way to measure how far you are away from the, we already uh, figured out like uh, what standard deviation is. And standard deviation is how far you are away from the mean, okay? When you, a z-score, also known as a standardized value, is how many standard deviations you are away from the mean, okay? That's what a z-score means, okay? It's like, how many standard deviations are you away from the mean? So if we talk about um, Eric over there, sorry to keep, keep picking on you, Eric. Um, but if we think about Eric over there, he's 78, right? And uh, 78 inches. And what would you say the mean of that distribution over there is approximately? I, 68, 68. Six, I would say closer to, six, I'm just guessing, okay? But let's say the mean is 68, right? So so if we, oh, I don't know the standard deviation, I have to calculate that, right? But I could take the, if I take uh, Eric's height, which is 68, uh, I mean 78, right? 78, and subtract it from the mean of 68, and divide it by the standard deviation, I'm just going to say that this, I'm going to make up a number. Say the standard deviation is 4, okay, so I get 10 divided by uh, 4, 
and so he's 2.5 standard deviations above the mean, okay? If, if the standard deviation of that distribution was four, okay? So if you are, and we'll learn in the next chapter, like percent type, or maybe it's this chapter, what per, so if anyone know what percent is one standard deviation from the mean, approximately? 34 above, 34 below. So if you're within one standard deviation in the mean, that's about 68%, okay? If you go two standard deviations, anyone know? Uh, two standard deviations, it's about 95%, okay? So 95% are within two standard deviations of mean. So that's what a z-square is, okay? So if we talk, um, if we talk about Jenny location in the test score distribution, so the mean is 80, and the standard deviation is about six, that's something, the standard deviation, they'll either give you, or you could do that on your calculator. You did have to show how you did it by hand, and you should know where that comes from, but you could use your calculator to calculate standard deviation, okay? Uh, so Jenny's score of 86 is about one standard deviation above the mean, and uh, this is known as standardizing. So we would say that Jenny had an 80, since the mean is 80, so we go 86 minus 80, minus 80, divided by six, gives a Z equals one in that case. So this is, this is the individual statistic, this is the mean, this is a standard deviation. Can I have a negative Z score? Yes. No. Yes, you can, all right? If you're below the mean, if you're below the mean, so poor Natalie over there, right? She's uh, below the mean, right? So I, I don't feel, no. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean, it's nice to be smaller, right? Yeah, you can go on the airplanes better. You can go on the, you fit in airplanes better, you can go on the rides for free, you know? No. <laughs> Uh, in, uh, oh, you can't go on the right. Yeah. Okay. Any case. Um, so, uh, could you do this with Norman? Norman? Norman scored a 72% on the test. What was his Z score? So, uh, so Norman, uh, Norman, um, so all I'm going to do, how do I figure that out? It's 200 million pounds. Normal score is 72%. So that's a case in which you're going to have a, you're going to have a negative Z score, right? 72 minus 86, what's that? Negative, negative 14 divided by 6, okay? So negative 14 divided by 6, what's that? 2.3 about? Negative two, 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 negative two point three, three, three. Okay. So Norman is not doing too well because he's pretty far below the mean. See that? Hello? Yes. Good. Um, okay. Moving on. Poor Norman. Okay. So now. Um, <laughs> Why don't you guys try this? Go ahead, try this, okay? This is a check your understanding. They have these through the book, okay? Try to do this, and uh, let's see if you could come up with some uh, right answers. Do this as uh, part of your homework assignment. I'm gonna pause for station identification. If you give me a right answer, I'll give you a bonus point. Go to the bathroom, sure. Okay, I gotta pause my Pause my thingy here. Did I pause it already? Yeah, I'll give you a valuable prize for getting it correct. A joke? I had one, but I it kind of slipped my mind. Did you hear about the? Uh, did you hear about the um, scarecrow who got a raise? Uh, yeah, he was outstanding in his field. <laughs> okay, that's a nice clean joke. Okay, uh, that's a solid. Oh wait, where did my? Oh, I was looking for this thing. Looking for this thing. 